Hi, my name is Alex S and I'm a physics tutor at the Peer Tutoring Lab for UT Dallas. Today we're going to be going over momentum and this is the first in a series of videos on momentum and we'll be covering the concepts of elastic, inelastic collisions and impulse. So let's get right into it. What is momentum? Well, it's pretty hard to conceptually quantify, but I like to describe it as a concept that allows us to predict the effects of collisions. And so formally, we define momentum with this P letter here, equal to the product of mass and velocity of an object. And because velocity is a vector, momentum is also a vector, meaning it has a direction. And so the units of this are in kilogram meters per second. So why is momentum important? Well, this reason here, the effects of collisions. One really useful quantity that helps us with momentum is a conservation law. So when we're dealing with momentum, we know that for no external forces on a system, the total momentum will be conserved. And so this is a really helpful tool for when we look at collisions before and after a collision, if we know the momentum is conserved. So as an example, if we have two objects going into a head-on collision, they collide here, and then let's say they just rebound. We know that the initial momentum is equal to the final momentum. And so now we know what momentum is, we can look at different types of collisions and how momentum applies to those. So let's look at elastic collisions. Now an elastic collision is one where there are little to no frictional forces involved. So as an analogy, you can say they bounce off each other, like a spring. So you have two objects here, and this will be like the previous example I said. They collide, and there's little friction involved when they collide, and they just bounce off each other and recoil and go their separate ways. So for this specific example, let's set up the momentum conservation law. So let's see, this has M1, this has M2. This has velocity one initial, and this is gonna have V2 initial. And so of course the masses stay constant, but this will be v2 final and this will be v1 final. So this is initial, this is final. So let's set up the conservation law. So pi is equal to pf and so here we have the sum of all the momentum m1 v1 initial plus m2 v2 initial is going to be equal to m1. Now finally we have v1f plus m2 v2f. And so that will help us if we have numbers with the masses or the velocities. Now there is a special case for elastic collisions and we call that perfectly elastic collision. A perfectly elastic collision means that 
kinetic energy is also conserved. And so if kinetic energy is conserved, E initial, or sorry, let's do KE initial, is equal to KE final, you're going to have one half M1 V1 initial squared plus one half M2 V2 initial squared is equal to one half M1 V1 initial uh, final squared plus one half M2 V2 final squared. And you see for a perfectly elastic collision we have two conservation laws. We have kinetic energy being conserved and momentum being conserved, which is super helpful when we're doing problems. So whenever they say it's perfectly elastic, they mean kinetic energy is conserved. So now we know what elastic collisions are, let's flip to the other side of the coin and talk about inelastic collisions. So in an inelastic collision, the objects will stick together. So as an example, if we have two crudely drawn cards drawn from up ahead that get involved in a collision, they slam together and stick, they'll be treated as one object post-collision. So in this example, V1F is going to be equal to V2F. So if I set up the conservation equation, I will have M1 V1 initial plus M2 V2 initial is equal to M1 plus M2 all multiplied by VF because the VFs are the same so I can factor. And so because of the sticking of the two objects Kinetic energy is not conserved for inelastic collisions. And of course, elastic collisions don't just have to be two objects coming to stick together. It can also be, say, if you have a rocket and it's fuel on the back and you eject some. So initially we can have this M1 and this M2 stuck together, and then afterwards they break apart. So that in that case you'd have M1 plus M2, V initial is equal to M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final. So inelastic collisions are when objects stick together, whether that's initially or finally. And so finally, let us talk about impulse. So we can describe impulse as the relative strength of a collision, but do note now we are talking about if an external force is applied. So we say J is equal to the change in momentum. And so this comes back to our conservation law. We said that momentum is only conserved if there are no external forces. Now we have an external force, so there is a change in momentum. That's equal to F net times change in time. So it's how long the net force is applied over is our change in momentum. And so you can see if F net is equal to zero, J is equal to zero, which means there's no change in momentum. So thank you for watching this video on momentum. I hope you find it helpful and I'll catch you in the next video.